Hello there, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills and grow as a designer. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to design a video player placeholder in Adobe Photoshop. So on screen, you can see I've got a landing page design. We've got a header section at the top. We've got some information further down the bottom and there's a space in the middle titled how it works. Now we're going to add a video player placeholder in here. So, you know, when you go on a site and you see a kind of thumbnail image and a big play icon and the idea is that you click that play icon and it plays a video well, we're going to be mocking that up in Photoshop so I've cleared this space here and I'm going to switch on my guides I've set these up these responsive guides already and I'm going to be aligning the player to that so the ratio that for the video that I'm going to be adding is going to be 16 to 9 so that is 720p 1080p that kind of thing so let's select the rectangle tool and rather than just drag a rectangle like this I'm going to left click and then type a width of 16 and a height of 9 so we've got that 16 to 9 ratio now obviously it's quite small far too small to be of use in any way however what we want to do is select this and go to edit and free transform and we get these transform nodes around the edge now the trick here is to hold shift as you scale up. So we're keeping that same 16 to nine proportion. And I'm going to position this here. It doesn't matter if you don't have the guides or if yours are different. The important thing is that we keep that 16 to nine ratio. So I'm just going edit, free transform. The shortcut is command or control T. So it's a good one to remember. And the important thing is to hold shift so as you scale up or down, we're keeping that same 16 to 9 ratio. So there we go. We've got our video player sized correctly. And the next step is to go and grab an image. So I've got one here and I'm just going to press command or control A. So you get the marching ants that selects everything and then go to edit, copy, switch back to our main document here and then go edit, paste. And of course it will paste in the image far too big so let's go to edit and again free transform we'll zoom out quite a lot and then just hold shift and scale this down now all the other content on the landing page i've kind of bundled it together in a content folder and locked it just so i don't select it by mistake it also makes it a lot easier just having these two layers to work with so we'll just size this up using shift to keep those proportions so it's a bit bigger than our rectangle that we created. In fact, let's just give this rectangle a name. We can even add in the ratio of 16 to 9 there and we'll just call this layer image. Now by holding down command or control, if you just hover over the thumbnail for the player layer, play, player layer, player layer, and you'll see this little icon appear, that little square with the dotted lines. If you left click, it will now select this rectangle shape. Now, once you have those marching ants marked out for that selection, just go onto your image layer and then from the bottom of the layers panel, select add layer mask. And it will crop your image to that shape. Now at the moment, you can see that the layer and the layer mask are linked with that link in the middle, so we can move this around and it moves around together. All great. If we unlink this, however, and then select the layer, we can move this image around within the mask, so it won't go outside of that. So if we scale it up or we scale it down, it will be cropped within that space. Let's just undo that. And we'll keep those linked now. So the crop is great. I'm happy with the crop. So we have our 16 to 9 ratio rectangle and we have our image cropped to the same size as the rectangle. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drag the rectangle above the image. Of course, now you can't see anything. However, if you drag the opacity slider down, you can start to see that image blend through. We can even double click on the rectangle layer itself and rather than black we can select a different color so we could go for a very 
very dark blue and adjust that opacity something like this and giving it a kind of blue kind of tint also ties in with the rest of the page design in particular the header section here so you can get quite creative with your overlays and you can adjust the opacity to try and find a balance between the image underneath being visible and then if you have any text or a play button on top making sure that that stands out that being said we are going to add a play button here is one that I designed in a previous tutorial. If you'd like to do this tutorial and learn how to create this exact button, I'll put a link to that tutorial in the description below. So we could copy and paste this. And then just paste that in as a smart object. So adding it as a smart object means that we can resize it and it retains all of those vector properties. And with our layer selected, just go to blending options and just select color overlay and pick whatever color you'd like. So for this example, I'm going to use white and we can scale that down and then hold shift to select our rectangle layer, our player layer, and just make sure if I just move it off center by using the alignment options with those two layers selected, you can align that play button into the center. However, if you don't already have a play button and you don't want to do that tutorial, that's fine. We'll create a play button within Photoshop now. So let's zoom in and we'll select the ellipse tool. Just left click and hold shift and it will draw a rectangle with a solid fill. So let's just select the fill here from the layers panel, drag that slider all the way to zero, right click this new ellipse that we've created and select blending options. Select the stroke box and you can enter any value. So let's type, let's say four for the width. You can adjust this depending on the type of play button you'd like to create. And now let's left click and hold on the same shape tool and select polygon tool and just left click anywhere on the artboard. Make sure the number of sides is set to three and the width and height, they need to be the same to make a triangle. So it doesn't matter what you type as long as they are the same. Click OK. And we've got a triangle. Now this is a bit pointy for my liking. So I'm going to go to edit free transform. Remember that's command or control T. And I'm just going to bring this right edge in by left clicking and dragging. And we can then hold shift and position this centrally within the circle using the alignment options. And I'm just going to move the triangle a little bit just because there's a lot more mass on the left edge than the right edge. So using the alignment options technically aligns it in the center, but it will look a bit off center just because of the shape of the triangle. It's not a symmetrical shape. So sometimes aligning shapes within a circle that may not necessarily be symmetrical might require a little bit of uh, kind of doing it by eye. And this is something you can just practice and get a bit better at. Now I want this triangle to have the same kind of no fill and the white stroke that the circle has. And because I've applied this using the blending options here, I can just right click and select copy layer style, select the polygon. That's our triangle, by the way, right click and select paste layer style. And there we go. We've got the same attributes on both the triangle and the circle. Now, when you've got lots of layers, having all of these effects listed can just make your layers panel considerably longer, a lot longer than it needs to be. So if we select both of these, these layers with the blending options, and we can just click this arrow on the very right hand side, and you can collapse all of those effects. So that's just a handy way to tidy up your layers if you like. So let's go ahead and name that triangle circle we can hold shift to select both of these layers and then press command or control g to group those together and we can then call that group play button and with the group selected you can see it's off center just hold shift or command or control to select the player layer as well and then again using those alignment options at the top just align it horizontally and vertically central so it sits in the middle of the video player. 
And there we go, that's how to design a video player placeholder in Adobe Photoshop. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.